Good morning, everyone. This is Coffee and Headlines, and I have Stephen Sondheim lyrics bursting out of my ears nonstop. I am excited. Today is Thursday. Today we get to do our Sondheim presentation. Ah, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. This is our morning broadcast where we take a look at some news from our city, state, and country. Today we have readers' inquiries. We've got questions on email that I'm happy to to share and. Um, and yes, that, that big thing that I shared at the beginning, that's, that's from Into the Woods. In case you're wondering, there's a lump on her rump big enough to be a hump. We've no time to sit and dither while he withers wither with her. And no one keeps a cow for a friend. <laughs> that is Stephen Sondheim at his best. And we get to explore all this this afternoon, and it should be a lot of fun. But first, I want to welcome you to Copy and Headlines, as always particularly those of you that are watching for the first time, if this is, um, if you're watching for the first time live, of course, um, it helps a great deal if you, why are my levels lower than usual? I haven't touched a button. Interesting. Can you guys hear me? Let me, let me fuck around with the buttons. Maybe this will be a little better. Um, da, 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 da. How funny. I don't touch my buttons and all of a sudden, Things just get weird. Okay, I'll keep an eye on the levels as we go. As I was saying, we welcome those of you that are watching live. If you write the word new in your comment, we'll be so happy to give you a nice little welcome. And if um, you have something really important that you wish to share, um, it helps a great deal if you add a capital letter Q to your comment. Um, so there we go. Let us get started with our news, and I will get started by telling you about the Church of Guadalupe. The church is about to turn 102, and parish authorities have announced a series of cultural activities that will take place from October 8th through the 15th. Activities will include music performances, lectures and conferences, even a football game, and of course, special religious services. The whole program is listed in the referenced article, which, of course, I will include in the show notes. Now, <clears throat> this open open sea, uh, open water swimming competition that we announced a few days ago is gathering momentum in a big way. There are now over 1,000 swimmers registered to compete in on this upcoming open water swimming competition from the Marietta Islands to the Gemelas Beach. It used to be the Malecon, but it seems like they have changed their finish line. The competition will take place on November 18, and it will take swimmers approximately 12 hours to get from point A to point B. And I am totally jazzed about this, and I'm going to tell you why. It is not because I'm a swimmer. It is not because I intend to swim. I may not even attend but as a spectator, 
not of specific events, but as someone that pays close attention to how people promote themselves online, I'm just amazed at what these people are doing. Let me explain. Whenever I say to you here at Coffee and Headlines, I'm going to add this to the show notes and, and share the, uh, the Facebook page with you. More often than not, nine times out of 10, I like those Facebook pages because I want to know what kind of information is being uh, published by whatever it is that we talk about here. So when we first mentioned the open um, water competition, I, of course, like their Facebook page. And ever since I've done this, it's they publish nonstop. They clearly understand the organizers that when it comes to Facebook, one thing is to just put a post and say, OK, so now I can go about my lovely day. And another completely different thing is to nurture your Facebook page have things published on a regular basis and keep the conversation going. And I am so very happy for this event because they are doing that. And as a result, they're getting a lot of attention from local press. So there you have it. If you have a Facebook page, you know, it's like a little plant. You have to water them regularly or they wither. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Um, early this month, the Technical Committee of the Sofimat, or Federal Maritime Land Zone, um, authorized the expenditure of 5 million pesos to give the city's Malecon a bit of a, of a facelift. And several weeks later, now that the month is ending, onlookers are beginning to wonder, where is the facelift? With the so-called high season, and we hate that term, but that's what they call it, with the high season less than a month away, things in El Centro area are still looking a bit lacking after Hurricane Rosalind's strong waves damaged uh, sidewalks and damaged uh, structures throughout the Malecon, and this was a little less than a year ago. Authorities have also talked about repaving the Rio Cuale pedestrian bridge to even out the worn out bricks that uh, were originally used to create the bridge. And none of that has happened either. All we can hope for is that these things will be done uh, before people start coming back. Although, you know, there's never really an, an ideal time to make city improvements. I think city improvements should happen on a regular basis. Moving right along, let's take a look at the weather to see what's going on out there. Oh, yes. Rest in peace, Dumbledore, too. I read that the British actor that played the character passed away. Um, it is 30 degrees right now. Humidity is at 81 percent. And our temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 86. Our weather forecast for today, mostly cloudy skies in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon. Chance of rain, 34%. It used to be higher, but now it's lower, I think. A high temperature of 33 and a low temperature of 26. Tomorrow is Friday, uh, mostly cloudy skies in the morning. And tomorrow we'll also have thunderstorms in the afternoon, a chance of rain of 56%. That's right, the high percentage was for tomorrow. A high temperature of 33 and a low temperature of 25. Saturday, mostly clear skies in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon. Ooh, a chance of precipitation of 74% on Saturday, a high of 33 and a low of 25. And that brings us to what's next. And what is next is a series of inquiries that I got on email that I thought I would answer here because whenever the answer, I think, might benefit more than one person, I always like to answer over here. The first one comes from a dear cluster friend, Christine, who had some concerns about uh, the Guadalajara Highway. She wrote to me and she said, I have heard various accounts, including from an Uber driver last night, that more of the freeway between our two cities is going to be opening sometime in October. She goes on to say, after driving there two times in the last couple of years and the journey taking close to six hours, 
I do not want to go through that again. It was not a pleasant experience either time. So this particular opening would make the journey decrease from five and a half or six hours to three and a half hours. So, of course, thank you for reaching out, Christine. Let us take a look at what you wrote, because yes, they did say, well, first of all, are there any new sections that are going to be opening sometime in October? Uh, my short answer is not that I know of. As you know, here at Coffee and Headlines, we favor things that we see in print from reputable sources. I appreciate and respect that you may have heard it from an Uber driver. Here, if we don't see it printed from the source, then we don't pay much attention to it. But let's focus on the second part of this. The journey decreased from five and a half hours or five and a half or six hours to three and a half hours. Let us throw a little bit of a reality check on this one. And I am not an expert, but I can tell you this much. And this goes to anyone that is considering doing the, the drive. When the highway was started, they said that the driving time would decrease to three and a half hours. But that was almost a decade ago. I've forgotten how long it's been since they started working um, in uh, on the highway, the, the new highway from Guadalajara. And when you stop to think about the number of vehicles that circulate in the state and how that number may have increased through the last decade, I come to think of the fact that, yes, if they had finished the highway when they said they would, the driving time may have been um, possibly decreasing to three and a half hours. But when you factor in the increase in vehicles that has occurred, the natural increase that has occurred over the past few years, I personally think that this expectation of a fast drive from Puerto Vallarta to Guadalajara is not real. Not anymore. It's taken too long for them to finish. So I don't mean to burst your bubble, um, but if you are concerned about the time it takes to drive, I would suggest two things. Number one, take the plane. Or number two, take the bus. Um, if you're stressed about driving, I personally love the bus, and I think it is, it is an awesome choice. So needless to say, News about the highway are very important news, is very important news, so we will always keep an eye on this, and I think I'm going to. Bless me. Oh, that was heavenly. Um, anyhow, news about the highway is something that we take very seriously. It's very important, so we keep an eye on that. Um, let's see. I also heard from a gentleman by the name of Michael Mesetic. He sent me a press release about a new Korean barbecue restaurant called Day G or Day G. I don't know what language that is and I don't know how to pronounce it. But this is apparently a new restaurant that will be located in the popular Zona Romantica neighborhood of Emiliano Zapata. Um, it, just two blocks from the boardwalk, the boardwalk, and, Mal, and Vallarta's most famous beach, Playa Los Muertos, from its second floor, open air location, guests will enjoy the lively street views of Puerto Vallarta's busiest and most colorful neighborhood. Needless to say, we wish them well. I understand that a second, much larger location is currently under construction on the second floor at Puerto Magico, the new cruise ship terminal so um the opening for that is planned um actually i'm not entirely sure if the opening for that is planned for december 23 as they wrote or the opening for the one in zona romantica um anyhow the this very nice gentleman uh, i thanked him for the press release and then he wrote me back and asked me if i had any questions which i don't but i do have some wishes for you guys, aside from, from much success with your new venture, um, you know, publish news, publish, you know, create a Facebook page. There's no Facebook page for the restaurant, at least not the Puerto Vallarta location. Or if there is one, it's buried deep in the Facebook guts. I couldn't find it. Publish news in Spanish. Use the events calendar on Facebook. And um, 
and be forthcoming with information. I appreciated getting a press release, so I hope that that is something that this restaurant and other news sources will continue to do. And the third inquiry that I got from someone came from Diana, who wrote, Hi Paco, trying to remember the hotel you recommend in Guadalajara. It was full last year when we went, but we are going again in January. Can you refresh my memory, please? Well, my hotel of choice in Guadalajara, my go-to hotel is the Portobelo because it is within walking distance to the historic area, which is where I run most of my errands. But I do have to say that I've become increasingly curious about other neighborhoods, particularly those that are within easy reach of the subway. Because having now experienced the subway, I've come to realize that the subway is a lot easier to use than I ever knew. So it is a lot of fun to to go to different areas or conversely consider staying in different areas. And if you want to get into the downtown area, it's a piece of cake. For example, I'm going to Guadalajara later in October. And a friend and I are staying in Tlaquepaque, just about four blocks away from the subway terminal which will schlep us all the way to the other side of town close to where we're going to watch a performance. So this will be my first time staying overnight in Tlaquepaque. So just like the recent trip that I did to Zapopan, this will afford me the opportunity to see Tlaquepaque at night and take more time exploring that area. And I'm really excited about that. I have two more bits of information that might be useful to some and I'm going to share those with you right before we go into the chit chat section. The first one has to do with Mexico City announcing the date of this year's Day of the Dead Parade, and it will take place on Saturday, November 4th. This is two days after the official celebration. Of course, we know that this has become the mother of Day of the Dead Parades throughout Mexico, but it is curious to recall that just a few years ago, less than a decade ago, Ciudad de Mexico or Mexico City didn't used to have such a massive parade. This changed in 2015 due to, to the most unexpected reason. Uh, the, the cast and crew of a James Bond film called Spectre was filming in Mexico City and in proper 007 fashion, the film begins with a major chase uh, uh, on the film, and this chase is happening through a massive Day of the Dead parade in the streets of Mexico City. So, because there was no such a parade, uh, the, the producers of, of the, the creators of the opening scene for the film created a parade like, like no other. And if you've seen the film, you can appreciate that. But of course, this resulted in a number of people asking, well, we want to go to Mexico City when the day of the Dead Parade takes place because we saw it on the James Bond movie and it was massive. But of course, <laughs> there was no such a thing in Mexico City. But, you know, uh, Claudia Scheinbaum and all those people that run Mexico City took a hint and this is how the the ginormous Day of the Dead Parade in Mexico City took shape and is now an added attraction to the capital of our country. And the last thing that I want to share, as always, is um, the New York Times' list of five classical albums to listen to now. I haven't listened to four of them, but I spent the morning listening to the Ravel one. Apparently, there's a French piano player called Philippe Bianconi, uh, who has uh, put together a beautiful reading of some of Ravel's most beautiful pieces for solo piano. And I was listening to this early this morning, and because I love Ravel's piano music, it is always fascinating to see what people, uh, what kind of new phrasing or new sounds piano players can bring to pieces of music that I know and love so very well. So... We'll share this information with you in the show notes, as always. And now let's jump to your comments just to see what everybody is up to today. 
And I see good morning saying good afternoons, which I love. Let's see. There's a lump on her rump big enough to be a hump. I love that show. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Lots of good mornings. Lots of good mornings. Yes, it is Sondheim Day, Larcito. It is. It is. It is. So excited. Uh, good morning, Rob, my new musician friend. It is great to see you. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Oh my goodness, Paula! There are people in this world that cannot afford that many exclamation marks. Um, but thank you for the feedback. Um. Uh, Oh, I have n no idea what that means, so I'm going to ignore it because it doesn't have a Q. Uh, let's see. Do -do 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 oh, oh, great news. Muffin is coming to... Muffin on the mend. Muffin is coming to Into the Woods. I am so excited. And here is... And I saw, I saw a hello from Momo. It's great to see you, my dear friend. Momo, how are things... In Buenos Aires, I hope you're doing great. And there's a queue. There is a small convention center that has the only Stephen Sondheim Theater. At the time it was built, we had to ask permission to use his name, and it was granted by the powers that be thriving in Fairfield, Iowa. Interesting. Interesting. I understand that there's a several years ago, a Broadway theater was renamed the Stephen Sondheim Theater. Um, but I don't know the details. Or rather, I've read it recently. I don't have the details handy. Sherry provides feedback. Our bus ride to Guadalajara in February was fabulous thanks to Paco and Mihal's suggestion. And keep taking a bus ride with second story seats and sitting in front to see the great views while driving. Yes. Again, that's my favorite way to, to go to Guadalajara. So there you have it. Uh, param pam pim pam pam. There's uh, the Hotel Frances is a walking distance to the Degollado Theater right in the middle of downtown. Old, beautiful hotel and very reasonable. I've heard that before. Thank you very much for the feedback. And Evan contributes a nice hotel in Tlaquepaque called La Vida del Ensueño. Thank you very much. Uh, purim pam pum pam pum. Da, 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 Oh, what a sweet thought, David. Hope the presentation goes well. Wish I could be there. Well, next time you're back, next time you're back, you know, we do these Anchor presentations now, David, so you know where to find me. Oh, ooh. <laughs> this is funny. Muffin, the movie buff, reporting live from his air-conditioned bedroom. That scene from 007 Spectrum is beautiful. I don't really remember anything from the rest of that movie. I never watched it. Except maybe Javier Bardem as the villain, but that scene is imprinted on my mind like no other. And last but not least, Pat is also going to be at the Sondheim. Oh, it's going to be a nice party with dear friends. I love it. So this brings us to the end of today's broadcast. Of course, Sondheim is good to go. All I have to do is take a quick look at it before I mount it on my iPad. I am so excited. And this, of course, is what we're going to do next. But not before I thank you once again um, for your questions, your feedback, your, your emails, your contributions to everything that keeps us on our toes looking for information. Thank God I write some of these things down. Sometimes I do get questions about things that I talked about like a year and a half ago or things like that. But we write things down. We want to keep all the information that we can so that you can reach out and let us know what it is that you need to connect with. And that brings us to the end of today. Stay happy, stay kind, stay dry, stay in touch, hug a friend, say nice things to one another, and come back soon. Take care. <laughs>